Hi guys, um, okay, so today I don't really know what to record, I just really wanted to draw, um, before I start talking, I just want to give you a warning, this is very, very off the cuff, this is very, very, I didn't plan anything for today, so it's going to be a lot of rambling. Um, the footage I have of me drawing today is about 17 minutes, and I'm going to try and not talk for that long. Um, so you don't have to suffer through that, uh, but I would just like to post something this week. I know over the last two weeks or so I've posted two videos a week, almost, probably not on the same day, but I've posted two videos a week. I'm going to move back to one video a week because I do have a day job and I don't do this all the time. Um, so I'm going to return to one video a week and you might get one of these every so often where I just feel like recording a video and I want to be consistent but I don't really know what to make but I thought I would do another sketching video because I liked making the first one but the quality of it is appalling um, and I'm not going to talk about the same thing that's going to be way too much uh, emotional stress for me anyway um, so I thought I might you know just have a little drawing time and to be honest I really really enjoy watching videos of people drawing and just talking about their lives so I'm gonna reach out to that demographic of people who loves doing that um, just to introduce this character this character is wasn't created by me this was a character created by Jem Wakefield on Mavellas I'll leave a uh, link in the description she's been on Mavellas for a while and she's a good bean. You you guys should follow her, check out her work. She's really cool. She has some really cool artwork as well. Um, so I'll link you to... I am so sorry. I will turn that off. I don't know why that is on. Um, but I will link you to her work as soon as I can uh, on Instagram, which should be great. Um, so what did I want to talk about today? I wanted to talk about what I do for a living, what my day job is. Um, and for those of you who don't know, I work as an LSA or a learning support assistant, which is a really, to be quite frank, is a really easy job. There's not a lot of stress attached. That It's very like, if there's a student that needs help, then you can help them. Um, and what I do is that I support students with physical disabilities, learning difficulties and mental health issues. Um, I, I've had really good time, I've had a really bad time, I generally work in colleges. It, it's kind of a roller coaster of a job um, and I think Personally, it's one of the most perfect jobs to get into if you wanted to work in mental health or if you wanted to work with children or if you wanted to work in a, I've forgotten what the word is, um, like an interpersonal sector, like you want to work with people, it's one of the best jobs you can possibly get. Um, because you can work with a range of ages. I've worked in primary schools, I've worked in nurseries, I've worked in secondary schools, I've worked in sixth forms, I work in colleges. I've worked with all age ranges. Um, I think they're opening a branch for adults as well, so if you wanted to work with adults who have physical disabilities, learning difficulties, all of that, you can do that as well. There are, there are different agencies for these things. Um, but the reason I love doing it and why I've sort of fallen back on it is because it's very easy to do if you're very interpersonal, like if you know how to get on with people, um, it's very easy to do. Um, there isn't a ton of paperwork, there used to be a lot of paperwork maybe like two years ago, but now there isn't so much anymore because of uh, updated things in the, in like a computer system and stuff like that. Like two years ago, I would have had to do paperwork every single day. Now that's been reduced to like a week. You do it once a week. Um, and for anyone that is 
maybe lost, like they don't really know what to do, it's a good place to go back and like see your, sh like I, I know there's a lot of people out there who um, are students and they don't really know what they're doing. And one of the topics that I wanted to discuss at some point was um, university and why you should wait to go into university and not just sort of dive into it as soon as you possibly can. Um, and that that's going to be a whole other video. I need to plan that. I really don't feel like planning a video today, which is why I'm doing this. Um, but I... I came out of sixth form or high school or whatever you want to call it and I didn't really know what to do. I was quite hell-bent on doing a degree in English but uh, life circumstances prevented me from going to university so I didn't get to make that choice. Additional to that, I had a family who wasn't too open to me going to university so that was a whole other thing but that's irrelevant now. Um, and I'm not really going to go into that in this video, there's no point. Um, but I have had the opportunity to reassess what I really, really want to do for around two to three years now. Um, and what better environment to sort of sit around and think about what you want to do than in school? but not from the perspective of a student, from the perspective of someone who is working with students. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, you, uh, you know, you sit in classes, you sit in normal classes, you don't know which classes you're going to get put in. I think there's like, to some degree, you can choose which classes you want to go into, but for the most part, it's not really your choice. You're put in a class and you work with students and you see how they get on with their work. Now, I, when I was in school, I loved school. One of the reasons I loved school is because I hated being at home. I, again, I don't want to really discuss it, but, um, you know, home life wasn't the best for me. So I loved being at school. I loved learning things. I loved picking up things. I was a true nerd, true teacher's pet all the way from primary school, all the way until I was like out of school. I loved school. Now working in schools, I have a completely skewed perceptive. I get really annoyed at some teachers. I make really good friends with other teachers and I, I develop these really weird, I don't want to call them friendships because they're not friendships. We're, technically we're not even allowed to have friendships with the students. But you, you, you create a bond with the students that is very much an in-between kind of bond. You can you can be the teacher type that's very studious and, you know, wrapping the students to keep studying, or you can kind of be their mate that you kind of, you know, just tell them to work every now and then. You, you know, you really get to know a student and what they want to do mm -hmm. and how they want to, you know, go about their lives and it's a really interesting perspective you have because I've had altercations with teachers that I didn't get on with. My first uh, college that I worked at I absolutely hated the teachers there and one of the things that if you go if you do go into this line of work one of the things you will be repeatedly told is not to teach. You, you aren't qualified so don't teach and the problem with that is that in many instances the reason they tell you that is because you'll correct them on something um, or you, you'll you protest about something that a student normally wouldn't be able to protest about. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, so for example, if, and I had a huge rant about this, so if any of you who I've talked to about this <laughs> had a huge rant about this. So for example, if you're in in an English class and the teacher has no idea what they're talking about if they're saying that personification is one thing but you for a fact know that it is not another thing you can question it but you will be told you're on a lower ground than a teacher you aren't the teacher of that subject that person has by some means gone to university they've gotten the degree in that subject and they're teaching that subject um, and whether or not you like it, whether or not you are right, they are the teacher and 
I have found myself increasingly frustrated by that. Now, if I go into any other school or college, because I applied for an apprenticeship last year in January, I went to that apprenticeship and the teacher there was so out of their element. Like, I... She was... (laughs) She was like a, a a husk of her former self she just hated being there she hated teaching and everything she was saying you know, we were way way behind schedule i had to leave that course because i hated it so much and i hated that teacher um and she would like repeat the same thing over and over again she would repeat over and over again about how long she's been teaching and she would just say some nonsense about business studies and it it was bizarre but I've noticed that ever since working in colleges, if I go into a school and I know that the teacher is talking crap, unlike my former self who would just sort of sit there and, you know, roll my eyes and and bear, bear with it, now I cannot take it. I become so salty and so sarcastic. It, like, it, it, it completely changes your perspective on education and on teachers and the whole behavior of it because I think a lot of us when we were kids we didn't really understand the concept of a teacher it was just someone who looked after you for like six hours before you went home you didn't really know that they had their own lives or anything like that but once you come into your own and you become an adult and you work in that environment you really come to understand a lot of the things that go on and a lot of the things that teachers say and why they say them it's really interesting and for someone who's truly lost who truly doesn't know what to do um after they leave sixth form and they don't or college or uh, whatever you want to call it sixth form college high school whatever if you really and truly don't know what you want to do if you haven't found your element which i find like 90 percent of people don't know before they're fired off into university and they just choose a course for no reason other than the fact that they think it's gonna get them somewhere rather than doing that if you're truly lost and you really don't know what to do if you know absolutely what to do go for it this there is nothing better than knowing exactly what you want but if you don't know i would highly recommend going back to school but working there as a staff member and really like being able to sit in classes and go through the same process that you've been through for the last few years but not actually do any work um and help students that maybe if you were in their position you would have wanted that help and a lot of the time the work is quite simple in a lot of colleges that I've worked in it's all BTEC work it's all coursework that you need to help them with there there isn't too many exams that you need to help people revise for unless it's like a GCSE or a functional skills exam um and it it really like helped me decide what I wanted to do because I'm someone that has an interest in everything. If you, if I met someone who, you know, took out garbage every day, like they were a, a, a gar- I don't know what the, what the, what the respectful term is, you know, a, a garbage man or a garbage lady, the person who collects your waste every morning. If I had met someone like that and they started talking to me about their work, I would listen to them regardless of how, um, you know, uninteresting it is. If it is presented to me in a way where it's engaging and there's jokes and I can laugh and I can ask as many questions as I want, I'm interested in that subject. Whether it's religion, whether it's politics, whether it's um, beauty, whether it's hair, whether it's makeup, whether it's tattoos, whether it's English, maths, whatever. I have always loved learning. So as long as something is given to me in a receivable manner where I can adopt it I have always been able to take it and say that I enjoy it um on the other hand if a teacher is shit and I hate them I've never been able to accept that knowledge in the same way so for me when I left sixth form I had done all humanity subjects I had done no sciences because I was determined not to go into a science um 
not that I don't like science, I love science. Love Science is like one of the most interesting things to me. But at the time, I was really, really into my humanities and things like that. So I had done history, religious education, and I had done English literature. And I had come out of college and I had two years where I was just looking after kids. I was looking after my siblings. Um, and then after that, I truly did not know what to do because before that I thought my life had been set like I, I thought I was gonna get married off have my own kids whatever all that jazz all that Asian jazz arranged marriage bullshit right um, but after I had left that and I was free I really really didn't know what I wanted to do um, and I would highly suggest you do this job if you are lost as well um, if you are more open and you don't need to earn money f to live and survive. Like if you live with your parents or if you live with a guardian who, you know, takes care of you, I would highly suggest volunteering because it is an environment where you can come and go almost as you please. If you don't like the work, you can leave the next day. Um, and you really get to meet some really, really interesting people and hear their stories and you really get to figure out what you want. I did volunteering for a full year um, at, I think, about five different organisations, one of them being a community centre, and it really helped me work out what my, what my strengths and my weaknesses were. And I had a uh, something of a mentor, he was my manager, and he really pushed me to go into university. And even though I didn't go in immediately, I started university last year in October. Even if I didn't go in immediately, it really puts that thought in your head that maybe that is the way for me. Maybe I do need to do that. Um, but it, it it's where I found my strength, which was all my interpersonal skills that I didn't realize I had because I was always a shy, bookish nerd who never really talked to anybody and kind of hates people but on the same level loves people and loves learning about people and you know knowing what they do so I think that's my ramble for the day um, I would highly suggest looking into that kind of work if you are lost after you've come out of college and you don't know what to do in university um, I will be making another video on what I think people should do in terms of going to university but until then I will see you soon uh, in the next one and please like and share if you enjoyed this thank you